our students. Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another awesome video. And why is this awesome? Because it's just awesome. Now, a lot of people want us to do comic books. Now, in order to do, a, to do a comic book, you have to have a character. Now, a lot of people are having trouble designing characters, so I gave this a lot of thought and I show you how to design an awesome character. So if you really wanna learn how to draw a character or to design a character, go over there, right over there. Just go right there. All right, character design time. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to do a video on character designing, and that's kind of like saying, teach me how to draw a flower. I mean, there's so many different flowers, and I don't know what kind of flower you want. So it's hard for me to teach it. It's like your character could be anything. So it would be hard for me to teach you so teach you how to do a character. So I gave this a lot of thought and I just came up with something that may help you guys in character designing. So for you guys that absolutely say that you cannot, cannot draw, um, I'm going to give you a quick, easy body to draw. I think this is probably about as easy as I can make it other than drawing it for you myself. So. For you guys, now this is just basically, this is just going to be a mannequin for you to put your costume on. This is not going to be muscular or anything like that. This is just going to be the basic mannequin for you to put your character's costume on and mask on and so forth. So if you cannot draw muscles and so forth, don't worry about that yet. This is just for you to do your character sketch design on. So first thing you do, and basically we're going to use a lot of triangles. You know, it's easy to do a triangle. You just have to figure out how big or small you want your triangle all right so first thing we're going to do we're going to do the torso so we're going to do this and i'm going to go slow so that you guys can keep up and if i go too fast just pause it or rewind it rewind it go back and then do it again so you're going to do a triangle you're going to since uh, since you, if you're doing a man and we'll do a female the man's shoulders are wider than a female and you have a superhero you want wide shoulders so you want to bring it down into a triangle but you don't want to go all the way down to the triangle you want to bring it down about like that and then cut it just like that so if I kept going with a triangle I do this now if, you, if it's hard for you to do turn it upside down draw a triangle cut it right above like the belt where you figure the belt would be at and this is crooked yes this is crooked because my paper is crooked so you want to get rid of this I'm drawing dark because a lot of times I draw too light so after that, we want to do the upside down house, but you want to make it a little longer. So you want to do this. And again, if it's easier for you to turn it over, turn it over. You want to go straight up and then in. That's your house. That's your upside down house. Now you can make this wider or narrower, but this is just to show you guys how to get started. All right, flip that over again. Now, uh, let's just do a center line just because center line, you want to go up past that and then you do your oval for your head just kind of find the right size you want the smaller the head the wider the shoulders are going to be and then uh the more powerful he's going to look so don't do like a big head like this because that will look like a little boy or something so and then just come straight down with the neck and that neck to me that neck is a little long but this is just for you to follow along let me pause because i heard some people are like wait you're going too fast so now arms, for those people who have trouble drawing arms, I'm gonna give you three shapes to put together. First of all, if you do 100, one, zero, zero, this is what we're gonna use. So don't say I can't do an oval. So you just wanna do one big circle, one big oval, like that, and then a triangle. It goes down like that, almost like an ice cream cone with a thing over it and then cut this somewhere here. That is your arm. And what you're gonna do with that is, let me use a marker so you guys can see. Where is my brush marker? You're gonna fill in the blanks. You're gonna come around the circle, go in and out, go in and out like that. Fill in the blank, go around, in and back out like that. And this is the hand. And you see that arm, and that's a, that's, a, that's a fairly good arm for someone that can't really draw an arm. And as I said, this is basically your mannequin shape. 
This is not, you know, the body, 100% body. And my camera's going to blur because it doesn't like when I do that. So again, you have the straight line. Under the straight line, take it off a little bit. Circle. Keep that circle, make that circle touch this. Circle. Do it on the other side as well. Oval. And then triangle. Bring that oval down close to here. Not too, too long, but you're going to have to judge your um, distance yourself. And then triangle. Triangle should stop, well, your, your wrist stops right at the bottom of your crotch. So wherever that is, do a line like that. Same thing. If you want to put the arm out, you can put the arm out. Oval. Circle, oval, triangle. You can put both arms straight down, however. Cut it. So those are your arms. These are quick arms. And as I said, you want to go in, out, in, out. In and out again. And then just erase these parts in the middle. And then you have a quick arm. And then a hand. A hand is like this. I do my hands like this. It's almost a square. It is a square. And then whichever side the thumb is on, that's going to be the high point. So you're going to, from this point up, not too far up, but just up like that. And then your thumb comes there. And then your fingers come down. One two three i don't put four fingers because it's just kind of weird doing the four fingers so the one finger it would curve around like that or the end of web the web part curves curves like that and it comes out and then curve that because this is this is that part right there so you're going to come down make that square come up my thumb is going to come off of here, just like just like a half a moon. If you're drawing a moon, half a moon, like that. And then finger can be straight or it can come in, but I'll make the first one just straight down like that. Second one comes from behind that like this, and the third one like that. The fourth one can be tucked behind the third one. Nobody's going to question it because this is your character design. Let's pull it down, Brian. Let's not keep it at the top. Same thing here, square. So you don't want to have a thin wrist. You don't want this triangle to point you like that and then cut it off right here. You want to cut it off so you can have a nice size wrist. And then after you cut it off at that point, then you can put the square. Cut it off, let's say from the where the thumb is, it's high, the higher point is where the thumb, bring the thumb around. And then the finger comes straight down like this. Second finger and third finger like that. Unless the character is going to hold a gun or something like that, then that's a different story. So now you have this. Now you have your, your legs. And that's going to be kind of a triangle too, but they're going to be longer. But you don't want it to really come to a point. So you're going to come like this and like this. Not really coming to a point. Just cut it like that. This, like that. Right there. Well, okay, this leg is a little thicker, but as I said, you're going to have to judge that for yourself. Now, right here on the shoulder, from this point here, not way out here, from this point right here to like halfway up the neck, just do a half a triangle here. Same thing on the other side. This point right here, halfway up the neck, little triangle right there. That gives your, your character some shoulders. All right, now the legs are too long, which is a little long for me. Erase some of it. Yeah, that's about right. And then bring down, straight down. See how this is going at an angle? Bring this straight down. Cut it here, straight down, and then out. Straight down and out. And there you have, I got to remember not to keep it way up like that. There you have a quick body to dress as your character. I'm going to do this. And out, and out. And out and in out like that. Let me erase all of this. So there's a quick body for your character there. Now I'm gonna show you how to do a woman and a big guy, like the Hulk, big hulky guy. So legs. Now if you want to shape the legs up, then it all depends on your costume, and we'll get into that later. 
somewhere halfway between that, do this for the knee. And where the knee is, just bring it in toward the knee and then back out again. So in toward the knee and then back out again. In toward the knee and back out. In toward the knee and back out. Now, let me ink this and I'll add maybe a little bit of shape to it. Not too much. I'm waiting for you guys. So we have the shoulder. Slow down. In, out, in, out, in, out. Here we go. And then your hand. Curve that around. Here's my thumb. Finger behind that and finger behind that. So this is straight down. You could actually put a little curve to it like that to give it some nice lats. Curve and go in. Straight down. And then legs curve into the knee and curve back out. So here you should make that a curve. Give a little space for the man junk. Into the knee and back out. Into the knee and back out. Into the knee, back out, straight down for the foot. And then kind of half a triangle. Straight down and then half a triangle for the foot. And hopefully I didn't pull it off. You guys can see I'm going to need to keep looking at the monitor. Again, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. that curve it around to the first finger second finger behind it third finger behind that and here's your shoulder that your neck and your head and then there is your basic mannequin for you to put clothes on so let me show you to do a female and then the hulking type figure and then we'll start breaking down characters Character, characters. Character design. Uh, you just you can see through that. So one other thing is here, since you had the center line, here's your collarbone. Collarbone, where is my brush again? You have the center line. At the center line, you have this little dip. Your collarbone goes here, here, if you want to just throw some muscle in. Your neck comes from here to here, out like that. Halfway, well, not too halfway. Let's just say almost halfway. You can put some chest, just a little curved line, and then up like that. You know, you don't need stomach and muscles and all that. You already have your waist. So if you want to put a belt, you can put the belt there. But I'll use this when we start dressing, or I'll draw another one. So female, female. Trying to get some paper. Female. And I've shown people how to do female before. So you want to do a triangle. This one's going to be a real triangle. Triangle. The length of the body, the length of the body. If that's hard to do, upside down. Draw your line through it just because. So you have one up right side up and one upside down. So the other one is going to be like that. And you don't want this wider and this narrow because that's giving big shoulders. You can have this narrow and this wide, which gives bigger hips or you could have the line a straight down and that's basically the perfect measurements the this should be the same length as the hips unless you just want a female with big hips so let me slow down a little bit i'm trying to go fast because i don't want this to be a long video but i think it's going to be a long video i don't want to do part twos so you just have to sit through this for an hour but knowledge is power so erase these, the inner inner part, all this inner stuff. Keep that center line. You always keep your center line. So we have this. Now, what you can do is instead of having a point, just start curving, curve it a little bit. Same way with the man's arms, curve it. Now, go straight up. Here's the head. Make a point for the chin like that. And then round it off. The woman has a bigger head than a man in, in art, not like in real life or anything like that. And a smaller, a thinner neck like that. It's not going to be a thick neck. So put your circle inside, if I'm not mistaken, put your circle inside here. And then again, 
want to this is going to be narrow a narrow um oval and a wider triangle and then cut it or should it have been outside we'll see we'll see i believe it's inside and then let's so say your oval again which is just one zero zero ovals easy and then triangle like that and then cut it so you can have some hand there so now from here i would say like okay this is her waist and we can make her waist smaller you can always bring it in make her waist smaller if you choose so i would say maybe again halfway down from like if this is the center point i would say halfway down maybe a little more than halfway down put a mark here and that's where you're going to stop the breasts so the breasts are i would say right under the chin right there under the chin this point do a heart upside down heart and the heart can come off of the body or it can stay in inside the triangle either way so i'll keep mine in and see this is low as i want to go right here you know because if you do breasts real low hanging down then those are like droopy breasts and superheroes don't have droopy breasts superhero hero heroines so and if it's hard to do a heart do a heart upside right side up heart go here heart Go there. Yeah, so the shoulders definitely come inside. So take these points off like that. And then we're going to round these shoulders off. The way we did the guy, we put the triangle here. That's not for women. Women slope. Their, their shoulders slope down like this and then around the arm. So if you didn't see that, where's my brush? It comes down, slopes down, kind of like a ski slope. And then a jump like that then you go for the arm again and this is narrow whereas the man has big bicep here the female has a really small bicep and a bigger forearm whereas the man has a the big bicep and the forearm is not as big as the, the bicep so yeah it goes up and the breasts as they come up like this, they curve around into this piece here. So you go here and then the breast. Let me finish drawing this before I ink it though. So from here, you want to leave some room for the lady junk. And then you can either do the legs together or you can have one and one out, depending on the stand that you choose. But I'm going to go together. So leaving room for the lady junk as i said you want to bring the legs these you want to bring to a triangle to a diamond triangle come on brian get it right and then you can slim it out because she's kind of thick so you can round it round it off a little bit or a lot of it really and those hips off a lot of bit and then the legs go up here like that and if the legs are too fat for you just slim it down if you want the athletic type just come in and slim that down so you figure out where the feet are and because she's not gonna have big thick um, ankles so stem again straight down straight down and then out so you basically make it half a triangle like that straight down and then out like that and then again you can shape the legs up the way you want to shape them up if you get the knee I'm taking this extra meat off because I'm gonna make it a little slimmer so halfway, you have this and you have this. Let's make it a little slimmer. And you can always slim it down as much as you want. But again, this is just a mannequin for your suit to go on. And I need to either move my camera over because I'm constantly sliding it up. Let me do that. All right. So from here to here, halfway is the knee. You can either do this or just the little part, like I said. Again, this is not, this does not take the place of drawing the body right. So bring it to the knee and back out. So you basically, you're just doing this. You're just sucking it in like that. So do it with a pencil. You're just doing this like that. And then you're bringing it back out like that. So now if you want to slimmer down some, as I said, just go in well without me erasing let's just say we already have this so i want to do this and you can bring the arm over if it's too far out 
to bring it over. But with this, you can say like, this is way out, so let's take it under the breast, touching the breast, bring it in, following the same curve, and like that. And then you, you just slim the body down. Under the breast, bring it in, following that same curve, and you slim it down. Or you can have wide hips, depending on what type of character you want. Just bring that out more here, and then bring it in, like that. You have wider hips. You can make it as slim as you want, or as wide as you want. That's, that's your character, depending on what your character is. If, she, if she's a runner, uh, if she's a swimmer, if she's like, you know, she hulk just with more muscles, that you have a million ways to change your character. And that's why I was saying it's hard to do character design if I don't know what your character looks like. So let's do this. Let's bring this in a little bit more. Out, in, out, in. Narrow. This is going to be a narrow, and this is going to be there. Same way with the hands. The square. The thumb is on the inside, so that's going to be like this. The thumb, and then your hands, fingers. The square, thumb. So it's going to go. It's going to go this way. Sorry. The the point is going to be on the outside of the hand. Or the body outside of the body and then, I mean if you want to bend the finger one two you can bend the finger you can bend the finger like that but it's better because I, mean, I, I usually just do straight hands for quick quick hands remember the point is going to be on the outside of the body the thumb hand you can don't have to be straight down just angle it in a little bit and try to keep the female hand a little more pointier than you would do the man and then you round that off like so so let me ink this so it's gonna come in like this there's the breast like that the body comes in out like that uh, this line again here's your collarbone for the female which is gonna go straight across Neck, arm, bring that in, out, a little junk, a little junk, room for the lady junk. And I just do some ankles on her. And yeah, since it's going to be covered, since you're going to put a uniform on it, you don't really have to worry about all these muscles. So pointy chin and then the head. And there you have the female. So like so. And yeah, if you want to put some knees, you can, but if the person has boots on or whatever, don't worry about it. So one more. Now with this guy, if you don't want somebody that's really, really muscular, just same with the woman, just bring them in. Just bring that in and then your triangle would have been like that, that narrow. So versus you have this wide triangle with a, with a wide shoulders, or you could have this with somebody that's not really muscular like he could be just a computer genius or something and he's not really muscular as the you know the, the kung fu fighter so you just yeah you just don't widen it so much don't wrinkle your paper that's a pet peeve of mine when i'm erasing and the paper crinkles up oh my god i hate that Get some of these extra lines out. All right, got the female. All right, so we do the, the whole type, the big guy. If it's a teen, there's always a big guy. There's always the big, big guy. So right off the bat, again, you're going to do wide, wide shoulders, wide shoulders. So that's going to be a big triangle. Now, you can go all the way with the triangle, but, you know, you don't have to. But so I'll cut it right here. 
center line, center line, and then just straight down, upside down house, like that. And he's going to be, of course, he's going to be wider. Now, the one thing about um, the Hulk type characters, how long have you been blurred, my friend? Unblur yourself. Thank you. Sorry about that. You should have been able to see that even if it was blurred. I gotta get used to this camera. Uh, yeah, what was I say? So we're gonna do the head. Now, the one thing about when you do the Hulk type character, they have small heads. If you put a big head on this guy, he would look regular. He would just look like a regular cat. So that is a one factor for having somebody like huge. Is his head is regular size. You can lift weights forever, forever. Your head will not get any bigger. Everything else will get bigger. Your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your legs, all those other things will get bigger, but your head will stay the same. Now, instead of having the neck come down like that, you want to bring the neck out like that, almost doing like another triangle. You're bringing the neck out, and you want to do the shoulders to make the shoulders round like that. So we have a normal size head. Let's get rid of some of these extra lines. We have this, which is the V there, because that's your collarbone. So now we got the big arms, so you're going to have the big circle. That's going to come off. Unlike the female, which stayed on the inside of the triangle, the, the delts, the shoulders stayed inside. The men's always come out of the triangle. So the bigger the circle and the oval, the bigger your arms are. So you got that, and you have your, your oval, and then you have your triangle. And you cut it. You don't want to have it drag in the ground, so you have to you have to be careful about that, how, how long you want it. And usually, as I say, it cuts off, the wrist cuts off right here at the crotch. So I'm just going to cut it off anyway. Yeah, let's make it go a little longer. He's a big hokey kind of guy, so his arms are going to come off. So you remember, you don't want one longer than the other. You just want to make it big, like a watermelon. And then it's a big circle, and then your triangle. And cut it off right here. Just make sure everything is even. Now, same thing with the legs. You want to do this. And this. We're, not, we're really not making triangles. We're just trying to do two straight lines here. So let's say his feet are going to end right here. Or his, his ankles are going to be right here. Halfway down here, you do the knee. Then you see how small the knees are and how wide these are. Then you want to go way out and way in to the knee. Way out and way in. And then you got your muscular legs. So it's kind of like doing this two mountains almost, but you just have to you have to get it right, put it that way. You have to get it right. So if you have to turn it sideways, you just know you go in at the knee, close to the knee, and back out and down. And then like that, because you gotta have the big the big thighs like that. And the same thing here, leaving room for the man junk. Come in close to the knee, back out and down. Out and close to the knee, back out and down. So the same thing with the foot, straight down and then out. Straight down and then out, half a triangle. If I kept this up, this would be a triangle, half a triangle. If I went over here, this would be a whole triangle. So half a triangle. And this is a good time to say, subscribe, subscribe. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I show people how to do comics, um, character design, storyboards, whatever you name it. If there's a character involved, I'm showing you how to do it. So welcome to all you new subscribers or you new people who are home because of the virus. And first of all, stay safe, stay healthy. And uh, while you're home, you might as well learn something. Learn how to draw. Learn, hone your skills. So, yeah, anything you need comic-related, comic characters, comic stories, I do it. So, hand. Big hand. Big hand. Big square. Where's the thumb? This is going to go up. Thumb. Big fingers. I'll bend that a little bit. Big fingers. Finger two. Finger three. 
make that curve like that. So again, there's the box like that. Uh, go in, the outside part is the point. Go in, your thumb is right here on the side. Half a moon. In, and I'll curve that one a little bit. Other one, and third one. Like I said, I don't, I don't put four, I put three because you pretend that the baby finger is like like behind the other hand somewhere. So basically that's, this is what I got right here. You have this curve, you have the thumb, you have this here, and then you have the one, two fingers bent like that to, is it bent that finger, Brian, bent that finger. Kind of like that. Yeah, it's just kind of like a relaxed hand. Yeah. So, and then curve it around because you have that curve, that web part of your hand, which is called the web, and then just curve it around. So again, uh, if you want some lats, just bring it down, take it from the, 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 um, that ball and then just bring it in like that and then down, curve it around like that. And that's your big guy. Now, if, if you need more shoulders, make more shoulders higher and then just lift the head up just a little bit more. And then you can have your big hulking kind of guy center line again kind of halfway down and you can just do a curve line for the chest you don't want to put a lot of muscles in it because if, if you're doing like armor or some kind of things with a lot of straps and belts that's going to cover up your muscles so don't waste your time trying to draw every muscle now if he has like a, a, a fitting suit like black panther or something then you start working on your muscles later so let's do this And then you want the, the, the lats and the small waist. And of course, this is like overdoing it, but you know, you 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 get the point. The legs. Over exaggerating, not overdoing it, but it's your character. And again, this is just kind of like the mannequin to fit your costume on for your character. And look at that. So your collarbone is going to be like this. And as I said, if you want a bigger shoulders, you can always make the head just a little bigger. And your chest. Your chest does connect to this, but just do this for the time being in your center line and you can come down for your abs as well. So your neck is gonna be in here and up and then right here, it's like that. So that's a good size head. So then you have your whole guy or you can make the, the head a little lower. You just have to play with it. Yeah, I would have put the head or make the shoulders a little bigger because the neck is here. Shoulders gonna be a little bigger. And wider, of course. Right now, you're just screwing it up. Yeah, so, yeah. Big shoulders go behind the head or the hand. But this is an experiment for you who absolutely say you cannot draw a body. Do that two or three times before you put all the detail of your character in. Once you get that down and you're comfortable with it, then you can start adding the clothes. So number one thing before we even start thinking about clothes and so forth is example, example, two seconds. 1001, 1002, this is my phone, okay? This is my phone. I pay the bills on this. I bought this phone and I pay the monthly thing on this phone. So on this phone, which is my phone, I can have any type of um, background that I want. I can listen to any type of music that I want. I can download any type of game or app that I want because this is my phone. This is nobody else's phone. And yes, it's 6.55 on Wednesday, April 1st. So because this is my phone, I don't have to ask anybody, what can I do to this phone? Or can I do this or can I do that? Same thing with your character because I have asked, I have, I have people email me before asking can they do this to their character? Can they do this to their character? And it's your phone. You can do whatever you want. If you want a, uh, a character underwater, 
with armor and pigeon wings, you can do that. It's your character. You don't have to answer to anybody because it's your character. So don't be afraid to do whatever you want to do to your character. Okay, now that we got that out the way, don't say, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, your character can be big, small, short, tall, whatever. Now, it depends on what, what powers it, it, your character has. Now, I'm assuming since you are doing a character design, you already have an idea for the powers. You already have the powers. So I don't know what powers you have, but you have to think about that. Is um, Depending on the powers, is your person going to be a fast runner? So if he's a fast runner, like the Flash, you really don't want this. I mean, realistically, you can do that if you want, if, if that's what you want, because it's your character. But realistically, if he's going to be a runner, he's going to be more this size, maybe slimmer with more stronger legs. So you have to figure out, um, you know, the body type for your character. If your character is more uh, athletic, she'd probably be more slimmer than this. She probably won't have big hips. She'd have stronger legs maybe a smaller breast because big breasts, you know, bounce when, they, you know, when they're running. So you want to give her a smaller breast, uh, really tight abs, um, not like long, long, long hair. You want maybe short hair if she's a runner or just, you know, regular length hair because the, the faster you run, you know, you don't want anything slowing you down. Like you won't put a cape on her if she's a runner. You won't put, um, you know, things that's going to flap in the wind to slow her down because realistically, if you want a runner, you got to think, what would a runner wear? If um, this guy, what can I say about this guy? He's a big guy. He's a big muscular guy. So, you know, he's going to be big and muscular. I'm not going to say he's slower, but he would probably be slower than this guy. Like Hulk is crazy slow compared to Wolverine. So when they fight, Wolverine got the edge on him. So you have to think, okay, the powers of my character, what type of body does he have? Now, let's talk about costumes or let me put costumes on uh, a character and then um, yeah we'll go from there so I'm going to do a different body other than these two other than these bodies because this was basically just the mannequin um, body for you to use I'm going to draw something else I don't know what I'm going to draw but I'm going to draw it no let's just draw straight up and down straight up and down character what fun is that it's necessary. The leg's going to be a little too short because, yeah. That's why you always start with the torso. You don't start with your head, you know, and then you start doing all this detail and you find out your feet are going off your paper. So start with the head, uh, the torso, because the head is not going anywhere. And I don't know why I'm drawing all fancy, smancy, you know, it's just, you know, me. Center line. So I'm just going to give you some tips about, you know, putting stuff on a character, putting stuff on a character to make it look, to make it fit the character. Head, neck, and some shoulders. Now, once you learn the shapes, it, 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 it becomes very easy to draw. It's really easy to draw. That might be really crooked, but, you know, hey. And his feet are going off the paper, but, hey, that's okay. In, out, in, and out. That's all you got to do. In, out, in, and out. And I just add some curves to it. So make that more of a circle going in, out, back, and in, out, back, and in. In and back, out. And then you have your muscles. The muscles, as Popeye would say. So now, unless it's like one piece skin tight, like Black Panther, no belt or anything like that, you're going to need your muscles. You're going to need how to do your muscles. But, but what? I just lost it. But something. But, um, man, I lost it. A symbol. You know, usually a lot of characters have symbols. You know, he might have skin tight uh, clothes on, but he still has a symbol. So, you know, your symbol is going to go here or wherever you're going to put your symbol. And if that's all you have to your character, then you just work on your colors Maybe, you know, some shadows or something like that. And this is just basically a fist. That's all it is. It's just a fist for my character. Just a cheap knockoff type of fist for my character. 
Um, but the one thing that you have to know that your character is round. All of this is round. So when you put something on it, it's got to go round. So if I put a belt on the guy, excuse me, I'm trying to get something off the floor. A belt on the guy. Let's just say I add just a little bit of roundness to that belt. Just a little bit of roundness to it. So it won't just look so, so flat. Um, same with boots. If I put boots on, just a little roundness to that. A little roundness to it. Depends on how high your boots are. If you got he or she had type of boots. But even that, if I put it around his leg, I don't go straight like that. I give it a little curve like that. There's a little curve to show that it's got some roundness to it. Anything you put across the body, give some roundness. If I'm doing wristbands, there's a little bit of roundness to it. Gloves, you know, high gloves. If, even, if it's at a, if, even if it's at an angle, just a little bit of curve to that. Um, what else I had? Because I was thinking about this other night, all the things that I can show you guys to put on your character. Now, let's do masks. There are several types of masks. Several types of masks. Two, three, four. And these are really narrow ovals. You can have like the, the Robin mask, just the, the cover the face, cover the eyes. You can have the what was it? You can have like the ninja type mask that just covers the nose and your eyes are right here. You can have the full mask, kind of like, well, the full mask minus the eyes being open. And you just have to give some like some indication that the nose is there. It looks like a nosebleed, Brian. Some indication that the nose is there. There's been nosebleed again. At this moment, I cannot see that, but I know that the nose is, yeah, shadow. It's shadow for the nose. And, you know, maybe some for the mouth, depending on, you know, how tight that mask is. Shadow under the eyes. You know, maybe over the eyes, uh, the cheekbones. But that's a full, full mask because your nose is pressing against the mask. Depends on how tight it is. And then how much shadow you want to come down under the chin, so forth and so on. I guess if I ink that, it would be a little better. But you can you can see that. And then what was the other one I was saying? The, the type of, like the Batman mask where the nose is covered and it goes down and your mouth is is seen. It looks more like Space Ghost. And then, of course, your eyes. Let me ink this just, just because it's looking kind of crazy. So, nose. Just because and then there's your eye, and then a little cheekbone, jawbone, ear, and the head. And this one, same thing. And just the mask. Comes around and you can have again. You can have some indication of the nose, the shadow of the nose, and indication of the mouth with shadow. And as I, I, for whatever reason, I can't see that right now. So, don't quote me on the shadow bit for the nose. But depending on what color the mask is, you know, you have that. You don't want to have a mouth that goes all the way across because that does not look like shadow. And then the head. It's more like your ninja type mask. And then what was it? This is the this is the one piece mask. So yeah. And maybe your eyes are out or 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 you just have like uh glass or whatever covering your eye, and then there's the shadow coming down and part of your mouth and part of your chin and a little line for your um cheekbone and a little bit for your ear. And then you have your Batman type mask that covers just about everything. Give it a chin guard. And your eye, whether your eye be in or out. And your ear is still part of that mask. And you can have your symbol, whatever, here, or uh, you still have it here or wherever. And we are back. For you, it was just a second. For me, it's like two days. So I stopped so I could take care of a couple things. 
So back to designing your characters. Now, before we go on, let me say that number one, there are no more new powers in the world. I think all the powers have been used up, you know, power to control the weather, uh, eye beams, uh, force blasters, uh, teleportation, super strength, super speed, all that stuff has been used up. Okay, so that doesn't mean that you still can't use it for your character. The best thing is to do is you get your power and then have a great story behind that. Not just, uh, I have a power, now I'm going to go fighting. And what's your reason for fighting? And I use this analogy over and over. The reason that I get up in the morning and go to work is for the money. I need the money to pay my bills, to, to pay you know my car insurance, to pay the car, all of that. So if I hit the lottery for a billion dollars after taxes, would I get up in the morning and go to work? No, I would not. So because I have the money, which is what I go to work for. So now if you have powers, you yourself have suddenly have the powers you want, what's the first thing you're going to do? Go out and look for somebody to beat up or just go out and have fun? If you can fly and you can fly at supersonic speed and you knew where you were going, you had a built-in GPS in your brain or something, the first place you would go is to some island or, or, or some mountain or something like that. You wouldn't go to like a hood and look or sit on a roof and look to beat up people. So you have to have a reason for your character to do what he does. So now that's more storytelling. So I'm not going to get into storytelling. I, I, I told that story before and I'll tell it again because later, because YouTube, the more videos I make, the more they take off. YouTube will only allow you to have say like 200 videos in your uh, on your channel so if I make 201 video that last video at the bottom goes away so a lot of videos have been being taken off of my channel so what I'm gonna do they're still floating out there somewhere but if you don't know the title and you know you don't look for it you'll never see it so what I'm gonna do is redo them eventually better because these were videos that I when I first started I really didn't know as much as I know now so yeah so we're gonna I'm going to redo them as I go along. Okay, so back to this. Now, as I said, there are no, no, there are no, there are no more new powers. So we're getting into um, costumes. Costumes, or as Batman would say, the uniform. So the first thing you need to know, there are three types of uniforms or costumes. You have your skin type uniform like Black Panther. You have your clothes like a soldier or ninja, or you have your armor. Now, I can't think of any other kind of uniforms. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go over all three of them. So your skin tight uniform, and these I just did these and I made a, this drawing, quick drawing, and I made some copies so that I don't have to keep redrawing and kill time. So your skin tight uniform is just basically your body. So basically you're just naked with color splashed on top of you. That, that's all it is. So if this guy had like just sleeves or something, it would just be like this. Sleeves rounded off like that. If he had boots, it would be rounded off like that, like that. Uh, collar, high, you know, the high neck collar. So basically, there you have your skin tight uniform. Now, some people want to put the 80s underwear back on them, which is fine. There, and then you have, as I say, your skin tight uniform. That's all it takes. But when doing something like that, you have to know your muscles and then you can put the uh, symbol somewhere on there and then the mask as well and I think I said that in the last video if you have like a little thin Robin mask if you see me doing an opening of my video and it's just me doing the regular opening and then I cut it and then the next thing you see is somebody staring in a mat with a little mask like that you'll know it's me okay so you have to think about that too don't 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 play the audience for stupid you know, just like if, if this was John, the school teacher, you know, and he put on a little mask, people still know that's John, the school teacher. So you have to give that some thought, you know, why, why do you want this kind of mask? Why do you want that? You know, do you want his identity to be a secret? Do you want uh, people to know him like Goku? Goku doesn't wear a mask because he's not afraid to fight. He just wants to fight. So, you know, in tradition, like this could be like the ninja mask, maybe with the, the ninja headpiece like that, that covers up a little more of the face. So you have to think about that. His powers also determine the uniform. It also determines the uniform. If he has no powers, then he might be a ninja or a soldier or have that Tony Stark type armor. But of course, he's got to be rich. So if he can fly, a lot of times people put capes on it because capes look, you know, really good with flowing in the wind and it adds dramatic dramatics to it. So 
Let's switch up and let's go to somebody that's wearing clothes. Now you can put gear and stuff on there and I would recommend, I'm not going to recommend it because as I say, it's your phone. It's your phone. You do what you want to do to it. You dress it, you put whatever you want to do, you know, so yeah. So let's go for number two. And these, these, like I said, these are copies. So I didn't really copy it dark, dark. So let's throw these legs back in there. Now, number two, let's say this guy is going to be the ninja. Ninja or soldier. I got enough to do a soldier if I choose. So the ninja, the ninja would be, let's just say the he has the sleeves. So anyway, if it's not skin tight, that means it's gonna be off of the skin. If it's not skin tight, it's gonna be off of the skin. So I don't know what does a ninja uniform look like? I don't know right now. So here's your arm. This let's say this is person is naked, no clothes on. So when you put a, a shirt or something on them, it's going to be off of the skin. And I said I was going to do a pencil so that you guys could see that better. So it's going to be like this off of the skin and it's going to be wrinkled where it bends at. So if I have, if it has sleeves here, it's going to come up and then wherever it bends in the arms, they're going to be just a few wrinkles. And if it's, this is his side, it's going to come down a coat or jacket or something. It's going to come down and maybe tuck in. If he has like a belt, let's just say this is kind of like a, your ninja uh, type of costume. And there's a little belt, a ninja belt, black belt. So when you tuck something in, it's going to puff out just kind of like, um, I don't want to say like a balloon or something, but when you tuck anything in, it's not going to be tight on you like that. It's going to come out. It might not come out this far. That's more of a jacket, but it's going to tuck in and then uh, anywhere it drops down, it's not going to touch so it's going to touch the top of this arm if he raises his arms up like this the fabric is going to lay on this arm here on this part of the arm and it's going to be below that part of the arm hanging down and then his hand right there so just remember that wherever it's wherever it's high it's going to be touching the skin and wherever it's low it's going to be off of the skin let's get rid of this little crazy looking arm So I'm still trying to figure out what in the world a ninja outfit would look like. Let's just make one up. Let's just, okay, so it comes up. Here it's going to be on the shoulder, and then it's going to be around the neck. And let's split it down like a V, like this. And the V is going to come over here, and this is going to be the, the where the jacket is, and the jacket is going to come down here. Coming around, let's put some more cloth on that. So here it's going to kind of wrinkle up, it's gonna wrinkle up here and it's gonna be tied around here. So let's just do something like this. Let's just, like that. And he has a couple cloth hanging down here cause that's gonna be tight on his arm. And remember what I said, if it tucks under, it's gonna kind of poof out like that. So if this is the body and this is the belt where the clothes tuck in at, it's gonna come out like that, just like that. So we have this hanging down, more wrinkles here, down, and it tucks in like that. So let's just put some little straps here. This is not ninja. If I did like this and put some dragons or little symbols or something, that'd be more ninja-ish. And then put the ninja symbol here. That's not a ninja symbol. That's the yin and the yang. Here, and he's got his belt. And he's got his pants, which are going to come out like that. And we'll flare out. Up, not touching the skin. In, a little bit of wrinkle here. And out like that. Down, not following the, the outer parts. Touching like the outer curves. And then going out and tucking in. Like that. So, if, if I have straps here. With the extra string hanging like that and then of course there are some kind of like wrinkles where you tuck something in so it could you could either do a V or just a line like that to show that it's tucked in under that um, it's tucked into that belt or, or waist strap or wherever and then you have these little ninja shoes Ninja shoes, the white bottom shoes, 
And always look at, start looking at stuff. Don't just take stuff for granted and look at it and just walk away and say, oh, there's a wrinkle this way. It's sewed up here. There's a stitch right here. And just commit that stuff to memory if you are going to be an artist because you have to know what stuff looks like without having to continually, you know, run to the internet finding, you know, what it looks like. And of course, your pants are going to be loose, wrinkles here, and it's going to be loose here. Unless you don't want tight in the crotch for, you know, a ninja. It'd be like that. And if he had gloves on, let's do the two finger gloves. And how would that look on the inside? I really don't know because it's usually like a strap and you see the back outside. So I'm, I'm going to lay off the gloves for, for now. So, yeah. And I'm going to ink these after I finish. So let's go with a a soldier, soldier with the with, with a jacket on, or just somebody with a jacket. So you do your clothes. Your jacket is going to cover a lot of that. So that's one thing you're going to have to um, think about. So if I decided to do like straps on his arms and knives and blah blah blah, and then I put a little nice little trench coat over it, I just covered all that up. So that's things you're going to have to think about. So things like that, a coat or something that is great, or a cape, is great for covering up detail that you don't want to draw. So let's say if I put a coat on this guy, let's just say this guy is like a soldier. Sometimes he's like a some kind of you know military kind of guy. And what collar? What is that collar going to look like that? Let's have it open. Let's have it open and running down his leg. So we're going to have the big sleeves. This is not going to touch anything. And coats and any kind of suit coats, they have this cut right here. That's why they give you the square shoulders. It comes like, some of it come low, some come right there in the middle of your, your shoulder. Depends on what you want to do. That allows your sleeve to come all the way down. So let's do this here. And then here's your, um, your what, Brian? Your what? You're losing it. Your collar. Sleeves. Let's say it's going to be touching. It's going to be a little open, hanging down. Let's put a little thing here. Button hanging down. Let's sit around. So this coming down, you it sews and it comes here. So it's going to come down too. It's not going to cut in like this and go down. It, it may come in a little bit. Depends on. Um, the tightness of it and then it just flows down here the distance between this and this or one edge to the other edge will determine how thick your coat is so if I did something like this and it's just like right there along the side of his body like that that's like a really thin material but if you make it thicker that will tell you it's a nice thick material so if somebody's getting shot and it's bouncing off the coat by having that little width between there People will say, okay, he's got a bulletproof coat or it's made of Kevlar or something, a thicker material. And then coats come around the back. And usually you have your little cut in the coat that you can move. So again, we have the collar. It is military, military. Okay, so we're going to have a belt here. Maybe some gadgets underneath of it. And another thing, too. Another thing. And I wanted to find a comic, but I don't. it would be hard to do. So, Magdalena. That was one of, my, one of, one of the comics that caught my attention because of the, mag, the, the amount of detail that they put in her costume. So, maybe like after book five, six, or seven or something, the artist changed and the detail dropped. Because that's one thing that kills a comic book. If you put a lot of details into a drawing, and I will give you an example because I can find this picture quickly. All right, these are my characters from a new book that I'm working on. I'm not going to get into it, but I'm just going to point out the detail that I put into each body. They are animals. They're half animals, half cyborg, okay? So... This much detail, when I draw this picture again and again and again, like this gorilla, if I, every time I draw this gorilla, I have to put in the same amount of insane detail that I put in it. And a lot of people, when if 
this book was out and I did the first five books and the next artist came in, more than likely that artist would say, okay, I'm not gonna put all the detail in, I'm gonna put a little bit more, a little less in to make it quick because there's always deadlines. So that's the thing that happens with a lot of books. The creator creates these incredibly detailed characters to wow you when you first see it, but then later on when they do another project or they get tired of drawing it, they give it to somebody else and that person does not do the insane amount of detail that the creator does and it kind of kills the book. So you have to remember that. So if you're doing a soldier and he's got like all these gadgets on the side of his belt and one could be like this and have all this stuff on it and all these details and these could be like his bombs or whatever. Every time you draw that, you have to put that same detail into that. Same way when you draw a room. That room has to have that same clock on the wall. It has the same, that same picture next to that clock. So these things, those, these are things to remember. You have to remember. And I know this video is going to be long. So it's going to be a part two somewhere because I want to do the females as well. And there's just a lot to learn when you try to do character design because there's like no one thing. Like if I teach you how to draw boxes like this, 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 in the video. You know, but character design, there's so many different designs that you can do. Or my design might not be the same design that's in your mind. And your design might not be the same mind design that's in somebody else's mind. So it's a lot to have to, to, to deal with or to try to teach because it's like impossible to teach any one way to design something. So that's, that color's not right, but I'm not seeing it right now. So... Same thing with the boots. Let's just say on the pants, his pants are tucked into the boots. Let's say he's got like a knee pad on and that knee pad goes around his legs. So the pants have to be tucked into that knee pad as well. Come out like that. So let's do this other one since I started this. It's gonna be tucked in, so it's gonna be tucked in and tucked into the boots. And remember the lines to show that it's tucked in, you can do a V. Same thing here, or a triangle, depending on you know what direction you want to go in. You're going to have your zipper for you know we have that zipper, and of course you're going to have some wrinkles there, wrinkles here, and whatever type of uniform the guy has on, whether he has on a, a zip-up shirt or just a button-up shirt to the side and. You know, your buttons, one side, your pocket's going to be here somewhere, pocket's going to be there, depending on your type of uniform. So, and say the boots, the boots, uh, depending on the type of boots, you can have these tight boots or you can have more of a realistic kind of boot, which is going to come down and right in here where the ankle is, you're going to have that material that actually it could bends because of all the bending of your foot. Bending of the toe, you're going to have a couple wrinkles. If you have your steel toe boots, it's going to be more round. It's going to come out. Boots are going to be bigger. It's going to go under the foot. And there are three levels to a boot. Let's just say this is a fake wannabe looking boot here. You have that little stitch here. And then you have your heel under here. Like that. So you have that, the three pieces. So being really detailed about it. I mean, you can you can fake it if you want to. You have that. And then you have your, your boots. Your, your uh, combat boots. Depending on, you know the type of character you have and I could be a little more detailed with that um, lace boots or just slip on boots depends on you know what you want to do but I would say go look up boots uh, military type boots uh, in online somewhere or as I said you can have just your tight boots but usually there's always going to be that little wrinkle around the toe. Around the ankle, the toe. Come on, Brian, wake up, go get a Pop-Tart. Is it a heel? Yeah, so as I said, I'm gonna ink this. And then there's armor, so your third one. So you have your, your skin tight, you have your fabric, and then you have your armor. And where is my skin tight? Was that it I just used? It was it. Oh, Brian, no, you didn't. So let's do that again. 
Don't mess up on me. I wonder why it had that line around the neck. That was my skin tight example. So again, skin tight, you have your boots, put a curve around it because these are cylinders. These are cylinders. You have your sleeve or let's put some, some um, little cuffs on them or wristbands. Remember, you put some roundness in there, your little 80s underwear, roundness, a little bit of roundness, and then around the neck to your um, collar, collar. Remembering you have to know what the muscles look like if you're doing this type of skin type. And then let's do armor. So armor again is not going to really fit the body realistically. It's going to be bulky, but again, it's your phone. You can have whatever type of, type of armor. You could have like nanotech armor, which does fit over the skin perfectly. <clears throat> or you could have the big, you know, the Iron Man, which is close to fitting the skin. Or you could have the big, um, what is that game? Fortress something, for something, something. Not Fortnite, the um, whatever. The big, where you have the big, huge shoulder pads and all that. Depending on the type of armor you have. You have your medieval type armor and you have your uh, technologically advanced type armor depending on the story so one thing i have to bring to mind i remember a comic book that this guy i don't know i don't remember how the armor was but i know on his delts he had like these like it's like this it was like these little these knives like this that covered like this part of his shoulder and that was the stupidest thing i mean it looked cool if he's just drawing a picture of it but anytime he lifts his arm up that armor is going to stab him right there because if, if he lifted that arm up, that armor would stab him. That point would stab him in the head. And I don't know if the uh, designer thought about that or not. If he just wanted the thing to look so cool that the guy had like points on his shoulder. Because, I mean, they were like like really high and pointy. So, I, I, I don't know if I bought that book or not. But, I you know, I guess, I think I did. But I don't remember if the guy ever lifted his arms up. Not that way anyway. Maybe to the front. Or maybe as he drew it, he realized, oh, this is going to stab him, so he can't lift his arms straight up like that. So armor, 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 armor. First thing about armor is you need to know that this it has to move here, it has to move here, and it has to move here. So you have to leave space for these parts here to move, and this rotates. So if you have the opening for the, just like if you look at the Stormtrooper armor, this twist here. Uh, the legs in here and the knees, of course, and then this here. You just have to have an opening for your armor to be able to twist. And there's always a belt or something, but this part twists. Yeah, it's going to twist here. So, but usually they just cover that up with stomach muscle stuff. So if I did like an armor, I have no idea. So let's say a high neck. I'm just coming up with this stuff off the bat. And the neck has to rotate. High shoulders, which will cut right here. You have to leave that space for something, some material or something right here for it to move. So we'll do this, some craziness like this. Like that again. Let's say it's gonna come out. This is gonna be, you know, heavy, heavy armor. Come out, that's gonna come out too, come down. Like that, under here, so you gotta have this space here, so we can bring this down here. Come out, and piece here and here. This is gonna rotate, we're gonna have a belt here because they never show that the, the fact that the armor twists here, never show that. If this is metal and on your around your stomach, it's not gonna bend or twist. But today's technology allows that to happen. So, and as I said, depending on the size of the armor, it, it determines how much it's going to come off of the arm. Like Iron Man stuff is just kind of like right like this. They want to keep it close to his body. But I'm doing a big bulky kind of armor. So what did I do? Like this, like this, and then round like that. Come up here. Bring that out more, out more. And with the legs, 
You can still keep the shape of the, the body to a degree. But this one's going to be more cylinder. When you do armor, it's going to be more cylinder shape. This really thick cylinder. So it's a really thick cylinder. And of course, let's just give him some bigger boots. Because he, if he got jets in his boots, I don't know how Iron Man has like these small tight feet and he's got jets coming out of his boots or some kind of jet thruster. So realistically, you got to have bigger feet so that you can have, you know, your techni techni tech stuff up in his boots somewhere, somehow. So... Uh, but again, I say this is your character, but don't play the audience for stupid thinking. This guy got, you know, skin tight like Spider-Man's, uh, what is that, the, the black suit, how it covers him. That's like, oh, liquid armor or something, and the liquid armor can make machine guns and blah, 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 which they probably do by now or have in books by now. But yeah, don't try to play your, 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 your um, people for stupid. And however, whatever kind of mask you want to put on the guy or girl, whatever. It's more like a fire retardant suit than a cool looking mask. But anyway, this is a quick drawing, quick drawing, that's all mask and this could be black because you don't want to see the guy's face so yeah armor and then of course your detail and your armor like when you want to make it cool you got to have the 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 stomach showing and maybe some things around here to give it that look and uh, cutouts for your chest and whatever symbol you're going to have here some it could be where the armor could is connected here or here depending on the fashion of the armor you could have the bolts like i had in, in um, my other drawing you have the bolts where it connects or you could have just some extra stuff here buttons or gadgets if you can push to activate whatever uh, and then you just cover up here and you can have like a, a knee pad or something that actually kind of goes into this somehow and then goes up or down however and then of course you know armor has to have some kind of great great detail to it and these little extra pieces could be black just like in a stormtrooper and then usually armor always shows the muscles because armor has to do that because your your soldier or whoever has to be muscular and then maybe, I don't know, straps around the feet, whatever. That's kind of lame, but it's there. And then you can have your heels. However, so the guy can walk. And then, of course, you got to have gloves for that. And then maybe some kind of pad on the inside. And you have your joints for your fingers. You have to have that. So he can grab something and then your fingers have to bend. So he, as I said, you have to have that. Okay, so. All right, one more thing. And then we'll kind of jump to the females. Um, whatever powers you have, it's best not to start off too strong. You have this character who is like Superman times 10. Who's going to beat him? You know, what kind of story can you write around that? So it's best to have somebody who just, just discovered their powers and it increases as they go along through his trials and errors and tribulations. That way you can have the audience follow along with you versus, oh, he's like triple Superman and who's going to beat this guy? Because if you are just coming up with a comic book, if you're just write, writing a comic book, you might not have that ability to think uh, God-like uh, stories, shall we say, to, to just say, oh, this guy, you know, he's got that much power. So who is he going to fight? And if you have a character that nobody can beat, then eventually your character, basically your story sucks because there's no reason for me to pick up a book. If I know good and well that he's going to, 
hit that guy in one punch and knock that guy out in one punch. So speaking of one punch, if you do give your character that kind of power, and as I say, it's your phone, you do what you want to do, then you need to have a great story around those great powers, such as, um, okay, belay that. I'm not going to try to get into stories now, but the greater the power, the greater the weakness he has to have or nobody's really going to care about your story. But now, if you're just doing character design, um, uh, gaming or something like that, you know, making a character for a video game or something, then that's fine, do what you want to do. But if you're doing a comic book and you're doing a character, you have to be you know, weary of giving it too much power right off and having a great story that people will actually continue to come back and look at. So. With that one, let me let me recap real quick and then um, see what's next. design for the males yes I know this took a long time but as I say it's a lot of information to try to cover because there's everybody's not going to do the same type of hero so next one is going to be on the females and it's basically going to be the same information but just tweaking it a little bit more so yeah long video sorry about that but I'm sure you got something out of it all right so without further ado let's get to the women's video